not exactly my standard type of film, although by now if you watch my channel, you know I have very eclectic taste. I watch all kinds of stuff. I thought she was the best Lois Lane since Noelle Neal, in my humble opinion. And I was blown away overall by the movie Arrival. And because Amy Adams was in it and I heard good stuff about it, I figured, what the heck, 2007 Enchanted. I never know exactly what to say about spoilers because I end up talking about major plot points. And for the most part, I, I think at this point I'm watching older movies and I'm not sure that it's all that pivotal. But this one is, if you have not seen Enchanted, stop watching this and go see Enchanted. It is incredibly well done. There are some amazing key features to it that I have to give away in order to talk about it. But they took me completely by surprise. The little bit that I knew about this movie existing, well, I had preconceptions about the type of thing it was going to be. You knew it was going to be this way or maybe this way, and then it was something completely different, and it was very, very satisfying. It blew me away. It was entertaining. I laughed out loud several times just at the overall silliness of it, but how well it was done. So if you haven't seen it and you haven't had that experience, go watch it before you listen to me talk about it. We'll take a short break. I was the generation that saw Who Framed Roger Rabbit at the theater, and we thought it was amazing, the interaction of live action and animation. Although, all the way back to the black and white Superman serials, there were appearances of Superman, who, which were animated, superimposed onto the film. It wasn't entirely a new thing. I really expected that the way it started in the cartoon universe, that Enchanted was going to be... She gets sent through the portal, she comes to our time, she learns all the hard lessons about our life, and goes back and maybe that makes her universe more realistic. Or she brings with her some of her magical optimism and that changes and affects people here. She runs into Patrick Dempsey, who was great back in the 80s and the comedy Lover Boy. I know he'd been in a few things since. Having him figure with his soon to be fiance and his daughter from his previous marriage, you start to piece together what's going to happen, right? Our expectations. She's going to help them find true love because of her innocent optimism, Giselle, our fairy prince, our cartoon princess. Or she's going to end up being his true love and not this other woman. But it throws you enough curves that you're not entirely sure whether she's there to help with the relationship or replace said woman when the prince comes through the portal looking for her. This was the big transition that I felt in the film. I'm looking at these things with my expectations. This is going to happen or this is going to happen. She's in our universe now. Things don't work the way they did. When the prince came through the portal and Pip the chipmunk came with him and Pip... I expected would become an ordinary chipmunk and sort of vanish, but he doesn't. He can't speak anymore, but he retains knowledge of who he is and what his mission is. That may seem silly, but when the chipmunk leaves with the prince, that was the first clue for that brief moment. You're like, the magic still works in this universe. And this was quickly followed by Giselle, Amy Adams, wanting to clean the apartment, she sings out the window, and you're expecting someone to yell at her to shut up, or someone's going to throw something at her because this is the city and it's the real world. But instead, all the animals come. <laughs> and I couldn't help but just laugh at the way this whole thing played out. They did such a good job. It's 2007. CGI had been around a little bit, not like it is now. It is so brilliant the way the real animals what look like real animals interact with the environment and help her clean the house. And yet everything in the cleaning of the apartment, everything is modified to be sort of more like our universe. Like suddenly there's cockroaches, but the cockroaches help clean the bathroom. <laughs> All of these weird, the rats come out of the sewer, but they help clean the house. It, it was just 
that was the turning point of realizing the magic from the cartoon universe works in ours. I think there's nothing could replace that moment of Patrick Dempsey coming into the bathroom, Amy Adams coming out of the shower as Giselle, and the pigeons are holding the towel to block her nakedness. And <laughs> he's just like, his inability to accept it, and yet he accepts it without totally freaking out. It really sets up an interesting flavor for the rest of the film that ends up breaking out into musical bits in Central Park with random people singing and songs out of nowhere. They really do a fabulous job, much more than now taking the animated stuff and trying to make live action versions of it. And, and, you know, and, and I've kind of given up on Disney, but this was long enough ago that this was just brilliantly woven together the cartoon universe, them coming to ours, bringing some of that magic with, and ultimately they do end up switching romantic partners in this totally, it, it's probably the most lighthearted, feel-good film that entertained me that much in a long time, just because the performances are so good by everybody in it, but I like Amy Adams and Patrick Dempsey. It was cool seeing him for... First time in a while I'd seen him, like I said, Lover Boy in the 80s. I loved that movie. I've seen it a million times. He looks so much different and yet kind of the same now. Everyone does such a good job of pulling this off. Oh, Susan Sarandon moving into the animated and live action universes and you know, being Susan Sarandon. And all of it just works, works out so well that by the end you have this story that it's both not... It doesn't, it doesn't defy your expectations in a way that's disappointing. It surprises you and gives you things you didn't expect, but in a very satisfying, entertaining way that makes you happy by the end. And that's really, that's a unique bit of art when you can take all those expectations I had going in and from years of just seeing the preview here and there or an ad for it and be like, oh, pff, you know, I know what that's it, what that is. I know what direction they're going with that. It'll be one of these few things, so why bother? But it was not any of those things. At the same time, it was a little bit of all of them. It even does the weird reversal at the end where she's got to rescue the prince, and they make a comment about that, which would have felt really forced woke if they did it this week, but it was 2007. And so they did it with a bit of hilarity and irony that it could have then that it wouldn't now because they kind of spoiled that by throwing it into every show that's written terribly. In this movie, written and done so well, it comes up and it ends up being endearing. It ends up being cute. And the ending ends up being amazing. It's got to be the weirdest, girliest, probably the girliest feel-good movie since Ice Princess that I liked this much. But this is even more happy, happy, joy, joy sort of film and yet it's done so it's done so well. I just can't say that enough. And it ends up being thoroughly entertaining. And the surprise being sprung on you and the way the other things keep coming up. It's got to be experienced to be appreciated. I don't know. Maybe you hated it. Let me know what you think. I loved it. I think it was amazing. I wish we were still writing stuff that was remotely this good and putting it to screen. And it helps when you've got that many talented people in the cast. But what a great blending of animation, live action, with the, the CGI live action, crossing over those two universes, bringing them together. Just good stuff. Check it out. Let me know what you think below. Enchanted.